College football fans can't get enough of recruiting talk, especially those guys that might have an eye on Lincoln, Nebraska. That's why we bring in Greg Peterson from Rivals Husker Online. Greg, how are we doing tonight? Doing fine, Mark. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, want to remind everyone that we're here every day talking Nebraska football, talking college football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So please like the videos. If you like the videos, hey, even if you don't agree with me, uh, enjoy the conversation. Hit the like button, subscribe here, hit the bell for the notifications. We go live every day, typically multiple times per day. All right, Nebraska's got its eye on uh, some top prospects across the nation, one out in California, strong side defensive end, uh, Joshua White, Greg. Yeah, he, you know, he's a big, good-looking four-star uh, defensive end. Um, I know he recently had named uh, his top six schools and uh, Nebraska wound up in there along with uh, Georgia Tech and Mississippi State, Ohio State, Georgia, and Arkansas. So, you know, it's nice to, you know, to have Nebraska mentioned in there with some of those schools. And, you know, right now with uh, recruiting the way it is, uh, it's just nice to have people interested in you, even though they can't uh, come and visit your school right now. <laughs> So Joshua White's uh, 17th rated at his position, number 243 in the Rivals, 250. So he sneaks in there and top 25 in the state of California. So you had a chance to, to talk to Joshua White? He's out, of, he's out of Georgia. Oh, he's out of Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, those, are my, those are my eyes deceiving me when I'm looking at the, the, the screen here, the CA versus the GA. Out of Georgia, that's right. We did talk about him. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's why he's got all those uh, schools, all those uh, you know schools in the south with the offers, uh, Midwest schools. So <laughs> no, I have not got to see him in person. Um, I've looked at his film, and you know, he he looks he, he's a good looking you know pass rusher on the edge there. So um, you know, big big frame, and you know, you, you always want some of those guys. You know, six foot five. You know, pushing two hundred and fifty pounds right now, and you know, you love getting those guys in the program because you can always add add some weight onto those guys and uh, make them an outside linebacker. So, uh, yeah, um, you would love to see him wearing red. <laughs> not Georgia red. No, the, not the, the lighter red there. But, you know, what? Uh, it's always an uphill battle. You know, Nebraska's record, recruited the state of Georgia pretty good the last couple of years under Scott Frost. So, uh, you know, it's never – you can't say it's a long shot to get a kid out of there. Um but, uh, you know, when, when he does have an offer from that home state uh, Bulldog school there uh, down in Athens, it's, it's kind of hard to beat that. So <laughs> we'll see. We got Greg Peterson on the line from uh, Husker Online on Rivals. Uh, head on over there, of course. It's one of the great sites for college football recruiting. And uh, Greg does some amazing work there. That's why we get him on here as much as we possibly can. Uh, Quan Lee's a three-star receiver out of Gainesville, Florida. And if I'm correct, I believe Gainesville's the home of, um, hmm, I think they've got a college football program there somewhere. Um, he's got a 5.6 rivals rating, um, not rated right now with a national or positional rating, but 17 offers for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's uh, actually – kind of uh, not in that uh, mold that uh, the Scott Frost is kind of coveting lately, um, standing only six feet tall. <laughs> I, I say only six feet tall, coming from a guy that's five foot, 11 and a half. But, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it seems like they've been looking for guys six three and bigger lately. But, uh, you know, um, a speedster out of Gainesville, um, he he named his his top schools in, in no particular order. Uh, he had Miami and West Virginia, and Nebraska, and Coastal Carolina in there. Um, no offer from the Gators yet, but uh, you know you got Nebraska in there on the top. You know, kids got a lot of offers, so uh, just you know another uphill battle as far as you know you're concerned about trying to get kids out of the South to come to Lincoln, Nebraska, especially if they haven't had a chance to come and visit. And, uh, you know, with the, the dead period in question, we, we just, you know, right now we don't know um, with these kids. Um, the one thing that we do know is that they're under a lot of pressure to, uh, to make a decision, uh, if not earlier than usual, because, uh, you know, we, we know schools are filling up fast, uh, you know, and uh, that offer might not be on the table if you wait too long right now. 
So then we got, uh, is it Brant Bingham? Bingham, yeah, yeah. Grant, Grant. Grant Bingham. Big guy out of Kentucky. Yeah, big offensive tackles, a 6'6", 300-pounder uh, out of uh, Plattsville, Kentucky. Um, you know, another good-looking uh, four-star. Kind of fits the mold of what Nebraska likes likes to have them in their line. Um, <clears throat> it looks to me like he's a heavy lean towards uh, Notre Dame right now, so that's always tough uh, when you compete against a, 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 you know, a degree from Notre Dame. That's uh, second to none. But uh, he does have the Huskers in his top uh, six schools. So, uh, you know, that's that, that's always nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right there, I you know, Right now, if I had to guess, uh, Notre Dame would land him at this point, uh, in, unless you can get him on campus. You know, same with all these other guys. So, Second-rated player in the state of Kentucky and number 30 at his position, offensive tackle, which is always a loaded position, one of the key ones, as you well know. So it's pretty much offensive tackle, edge rusher, corner, besides quarterback, of course, in terms of – just those key positions? Uh, is there just a little bit more cachet or are those guys a little bit more rare? Yeah. Those positions? Yeah. I mean, you know, those guys are the guys that you need to build that depth. And uh, obviously, you know, as many offensive tackles with talent that you know you can coach up, you want to get as many of those as possible. And, and, you know, everybody needs rush DNs. I mean, that's, you know, that's crazy. You look at that NFL draft, and that's that's what they covet there most of the time, um, you know, outside of uh, a quarterback as well. <laughs> so, you know, you you, you kind of know where, where uh, your bread is buttered there. Um, so you're always going to be trying to fill those positions in each recruiting cycle, um, you know, along with, you know, like you mentioned, the quarterback spot, um, you know, outside linebacker, DN, that kind of spot right there, though. Um you know, you're always building right there. The voice of college football breaking down Nebraska. We got Greg Peterson on the line. He's uh, nice enough to join us on a regular basis from Husker online on the rivals platform. So of course, head on over there for uh, Nebraska recruiting news and uh, the like. All right, Greg. So in terms of uh, the local targets, uh, who are the prominent guys there? Well, there's, uh, you know, a lot of uh, talent around this part of the country right now. Um, you know, we call there's, there's a big four right now in the Omaha Metro area that, uh, you know, have garnered national attention, tons of, uh, power five offers for all these guys. Um, two of them just announced their top five schools, um, at offensive tackle. There we go again, you know, talking offensive tackle, uh, Deshaun Woods out of uh, Omaha Central High School. He's a uh, Rivals 250, you know, four-star offensive tackle, um, a guy that did not have a junior season because of COVID. Uh, the Omaha Metro schools did not play. They, they canceled their season. Um, so he missed out. But, uh, you know, he was a guy that, uh, uh, you know, everybody was wanting him to transfer. Um <laughs> You know, come and play here. But now he's an Omaha Central guy through and through. Uh, his mom graduated from there, and he he would not leave the program. And he kind of st stuck that program together over the season. Um, so hats off to him. Um, no surprise, Nebraska is, was not named in his top five. Um, you know, three of those schools uh, were Miami, um, Arizona State, and Texas A&M which uh, the second guy I'm going to talk about, Devin Jackson, an outside linebacker, um, another Rivals 250, four-star kid. Uh, those three schools are also in his top five. Um, and these guys are best of friends. And uh, almost there's looking like a package deal, um, you know, and we've kind of known around here for quite a while that they probably weren't going to end up at Nebraska. Um I don't either. One of them really liked the cold, even though they they're from here. <laughs> but uh, you know, Devin Jackson, you throw Notre Dame in there as well, um, and Oklahoma to round out his top five. Um, Deshaun Woods, um, gosh, Michigan was in there, and uh, Florida for him. So uh, 
Yeah, two guys looking to get get out of the state, um, narrowing down their lists, and uh, definitely going to go to Power 5 schools. And then uh, Bellevue West, which uh, we just put out a feature today on Husker Online, and uh, you can check out all those videos on uh, on our YouTube channel on Husker Online Video. Um, Bellevue West, uh, one of the powerhouse schools around here, um, kind of a unique situation where they have two four-star tight ends that start for them. Two, two national recruits, again, um, Power 5 offers galore. Um, Micah Riley Ducker is one of them, um, and and uh, Caden Helms is the other one. Um, both six foot six, all of six foot six. Uh, Micah Riley, more of an inline traditional t- type of a tight end who's going to block. He's mean and nasty, um, but he can also run. Uh, Caden Helms. More of a, a, a flex guy, you can put him outside, and he can run like crazy too. Um, you know, both of them have great hands and uh, <clears throat> very coveted. Uh, Michael Riley, a, a, another guy that I don't see in and up at Nebraska, um, but Caden Helms still has a, you have a shot there to get him. Um, <clears throat> the problem, the unique situation, it, it's a great problem to have. Nebraska took three tight ends this year in this year's class. Um, all, you know, a couple of three stars and a four star tight end. Um, and they're going to take two more in this, in this upcoming class. So, uh, you know, they're really wanting to get one of these Bellevue West kids. And, uh, you know, I would, I would look at Caden Helms to possibly end up at Nebraska. Um, and then, uh, they, they just offered another local tight end in, uh, Pierce, Nebraska, a smaller school here, um, in uh, northeast Nebraska or in southeast Nebraska, um, you know he's another six foot six type kid. Great hands. I saw him at a camp over the summer. Um, I like him a lot. Um, ben Brommer is his name, and uh, you know so right now you're looking at at, at two in-state offers that they would really like to get, um, and you know here it is. You got to look at. Uh, you're going to come in and you're going to have four other guys to compete against. So, uh, you know, you're kind of battling an uphill battle right there, trying to get some of these guys to stay in state. Um, and then another guy of note that I can, I'll throw out there, uh, Eli Reardon, he's out of Des Moines, Iowa. Um, another big time four-star tight end, kind of the Thomas Fedoni of this year. Um, he just got a Notre Dame offer, and he's he's a Notre Dame legacy. So uh, look for Notre Dame to uh, be in the in the lead for uh, Eli Reardon. So what uh, what's in the water there with uh, producing tight ends in Nebraska? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, it's just the last couple of years uh, they're just they're growing on trees here. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> and you know these guys are all national recruit type guys. That's that's the bizarre thing. And I don't know. I, it kind of like, so I, I, in my time in the state, um, I've kind of seen things cycle that one year you kind of get a lot of offensive tackles. The next year you might get a lot of linebackers. Uh, it just so happens that uh, it's tight ends right now. So, <laughs> you know, and it used to be running backs back in the day. Omaha central used to produce all kinds of running backs. And, oh, it's tight ends right now. And, it's a nice problem to have, and you know what? These guys are all players, and uh, they all have a chance to play on Sundays. So, unfortunately, if you're correct on the projection that Woods and Jackson are leaving the state as a package deal, and I see, as you just outlined, they've got the same five listed as offers. They're the top two players in the state, according to Rivals. Yep. So, those two guys would leave. Um Riley Duckers, the number 13 tight end in the country, the number three player in the state, yep. then your number four player uh, at, at in the state or a tight end, uh, Kaylee Helms, or Caden Helms, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, tons of tight ends there uh, <laughs> at Nebraska and um, in state. But fortunately, they got plenty uh, just in this last uh, 21 recruiting class yep. as well. All right. How has the uh, high school football been in Nebraska? You know, um, it's kind of funny that you asked me. I mean, coming from somebody that played high school football in the state here in, in Lincoln, um, you know, and then going and and moving to Nashville and working for Rivals, covering, you know, the, the Rivals 100 and covering games and all your hot beds of high school football, 
um, you know, everywhere in Texas and Florida and California and Georgia and Pennsylvania and Ohio. I've been everywhere. Um, then I, I'm like, oh, God, I'm moving back to Lincoln and I'm going to have to cover Nebraska high school football. Um, and it was tough for a while because um, the talent wasn't very good when I got back here. And we're talking 2011. Um, I, I had, you know, we the, the, Nebraska had produced a five star in Baker Steincooler who went to Nebraska and he was out of Lincoln Southwest. And I had come down, I had flew in from Nashville to cover him when he was in high school. And um, that kind of, you know, he was definitely that kind of a talent, but you could tell that the guys playing against him, it was, it was uh, night and day. But uh, lately, you know, um, this talent pool has really increased around here. Um, you've got a lot, uh, you know, a lot of blue collar type kids that you've always had, but now you're getting a lot of mix of, of a lot of skill position guys that, uh, you know, if they don't end up at power five schools, they end up at your North Dakota States, your South Dakota States, your Northern Illinois, your Wyoming's. Um, and they, you know, they're foundations of those teams. You go to North Dakota state and you, you win the national title every year. Um, so, yeah, the talent in, in Nebraska, uh, the high school talent has gotten really good. And, I mean, the Omaha metro area, um, you know, you've got teams, like I mentioned, Bellevue West, Omaha West side, who won the state title this year, Omaha North, Omaha Central, Papillion La Vista. I mean, you got a lot of, of power schools, um, your Millard schools. They, they all play high, high level of high school football. The Class A uh, division in in the state of Nebraska, very high level, and I, I'm I'm impressed and I'm proud to be covering it. To tell you the truth, yeah, I see where for 2021 Nebraska plucked up uh, three of the top five players in the state. We of course have run down all these guys. Avante Dickerson got away as well as uh, Keegan Johnston yep. Johnson, Adam but otherwise got uh, the other three. Yep. Yep. In 2021, and uh, three of them are four stars. And, you know, I keep on bringing up that Bellevue West team, you know, with Keegan Johnson. He was he had an amazing season. Um, and, you know, Bellevue West only got to play seven games because of COVID. <clears throat> they had a lot of cancellations. And had they played a full, you know, 12, 13 games, um, Keegan Johnson probably would have walked away with uh, the all-time receiving record for the state. Um, he was that good and that prolific. Um, and, uh, they've got another one coming up. Uh, he, uh, just finished his freshman year and he's already got an Iowa offer and a Nebraska offer that offered him before the season even started. Um, that's before even playing a game of varsity football. So, uh, yeah, they, they produce a lot of talent coming out of Bellevue West. <laughs> that is crazy to me to, to project an eighth grader, playing college football, regardless of how athletic he is. That's just, uh, and, and, else. And, and right. You know, and, and you know, you know how crazy Nebraska fans are and, and crazy about recruiting. And right now I, I saw comments today, um, uh, because we cover, you know, we, we had a feature on the school today and I, I saw people screaming out if they let the kid we're talking about, his, his name is Davon Hall. And, Fans were screaming out, if they let Davon Hall go to Iowa, there's going to be mutiny around here. <laughs> Craig Peterson, you can join him on Rivals Husker Online. And as he mentioned, uh, the YouTube channel, just uh, type in the search bar, Husker Online, right here on YouTube. And you can catch all of his uh, player interviews. Scott Frost news conferences are right there for you. Hey, Greg, we always appreciate the time and the breakdown. Um you're always welcome, and uh, we'll get after some spring football position previews here pretty soon. Absolutely. Um, you know, like we've been talking about, recruiting is just so up in the air right now with, uh, you know, the kids in these situations that their hands are kind of tied right now. And, you know, I sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but, um, you know, jump on those offers soon. Um, because kids are doing whatever they can. I mean, we, we talked to a kid uh, that goes to Omaha Burke High School that they didn't have a season, and he ended up transferring to a Class B school, Omaha Scott Catholic High School. And because his family didn't move, 
they wouldn't allow him to play varsity football, so he had to play on the JV team. And, uh, and he just wrecked it in, on the JV. So, uh, yeah, these kids are doing whatever they can. So uh, hopefully, you know, we can talk some more recruiting here uh, with some good news uh, coming up here. But uh, in the meantime, we'll get after that spring stuff. And, and I would think that, um, you know, based on what you said about the, the, the couple top players in the state and not liking to play in the cold, that those visits in May – are key for Nebraska. They would love to get people on campus when it's uh, a nice little 65 to 75 degrees and looking great. Well, that, and that's, you know, if this dead period now extends out, out until June, uh, Nebraska's spring game is scheduled for May 1st. And, uh, you know, you, you, that's usually you're going to have a bunch of official visitors on that and you're not going to be able to have that. So, yeah. It's uh, it's just an ongoing battle, and uh, we'll see how this all pans out. All right, Greg. We always appreciate it. No problem, Mark. Take it easy.